Hello again, it's me, Max Evans. In the last clip, I illustrated the public view of the new finding aid tool, ET. I will now show you how an archivist would create a new finding aid, or find, open, and edit an existing finding aid. Staff users launch the program by going to the website and signing in. A list of all finding aids in the database is presented as a table. One may browse this list or search for collections by using the filter. For example, if I wanted to find the collection we were just looking at, CR1234 over 1, I could do that and filter it and there's the collection. Or I could do it by searching for the title of the collection. In either case, I can see the collection and then edit it by selecting options and clicking edit. And that brings me to a view that allows me to edit each of these sections. Or if I cancel it takes me back to here and in this case I find the collection right here and instead of opening it and editing it I just click the edit button right here. Going back to this screen, two more buttons complete this view. One, import is used to import an existing well-formed and compliant EAD uh, XML file. The other, add new collections, opens an empty data entry form. We will now add a new collection and then show you how to open and edit components, how to add and delete components, and how to rearrange components. Click the Add New Collection button. Complete the required data on the first form. The collection we're creating has the call number of MS318. And if I try to save that, you get an error indicating that I have two required fields that have not been put in yet. I'll enter a title here. and. I'm required to also enter a filing title. And we can add other fields here. I will add only one more. When everything is completed, reviewed, and approved, we will save and publish. But since I haven't yet completed the other sections or added components, I will now save as a draft. To enter components, I open the browse view to see a blank screen. Entering the components involves completing different forms for each logical level. Series, subseries, files, and items. What are grayed out are not available at this point, including subseries and, of course, edit, copy, and delete. For example, subseries can't be used at the first level but can at other. I will now enter the first component. Complete the title and date fields. Note that discontinuous dates are handled by using repeatable fields. More dates here if necessary. Also enter a physical description and the scope and content note. Next complete the container data using repeatable fields for each container type. Real one. And here we will enter the barcode. This is also box one. and it's folder one within box one. We are still adjusting the way digital versions will be represented, but the values in these fields will indicate the location of the digital object in our digital asset management system. We can restrict parts of a collection at the component level instead of restricting the entire collection. I can now cancel save or save and copy. 
Save and copy cuts out some steps. I've now made a copy of this and I can now then edit the values in here. If that was simply volume 2 I could enter that or in this case I enter a more complete title and here I'll enter a new date. Physical description and scope and content. And over here the only change I'll make is that this is now folder 2. I will now save and you'll be able to see the two components listed and so on until we've completed all five components as shown here. If needed I could also delete a component and all of its children by doing this which I won't do. And as you can see I've also completed the rest of the collection level uh, sections in this finding aid. Now suppose that the archivist discovered a series of correspondence related to the writings of the annals and a set of Blake's personal journals. In addition to editing the collection level, which we won't do now, we must create two new series, two sub-series and some files. I'll show you how to do this. First create a new series. Which we'll call Annals of the Southern Utah Mission. 1850 to 1900. Save that one. And another series which we'll call journals. Eighteen seventy five to eighteen ninety six. All right. Now we'll create two sub series within this series, Annals of the Southern Utah Mission. So here we will create new sub series. First one we'll call completed volumes no date and the second one we'll call correspondence regarding the writings We'll now create two new files within the correspondence subseries. The first one is letters to and from Brigham Young. And the second one, I'll copy, letters to and from George A. Smith. covering those dates. I'll now save. I've created another new series called Journals. I'll create two new files, three new files within this series. Journals Volume A, 1875 to 1886. 
save and copy volume B eighteen eighty six through eighteen eighty nine And volume C, 1892, 1896, and save that. I did not complete all of the fields for these components in the interest of time. I've noticed that I have made a mistake here, and I've created the correspondence as a sub sub series, as a division of the completed volumes when in fact it needs to be a subseries within the uh, Annals of Southern Utah Mission series. So let me show you how I can uh, move this by selecting the place I want it to go to and then grabbing the handle off here to the right and dragging it so that it is in this column right here. Now this series has two subseries. This series has three volumes, but this subseries is empty because the content of that comes from what used to be in this first column. Now let's move the five volumes into the completed volume subseries. So I've highlighted the annals series in the completed volume subseries. I'll then use the handle to the right of volume one, shown here, and drag it into completed volumes. Which now shows up over here in the third column. I can complete that for each of the other volumes by dragging it into completed volumes or dragging it into the third column, which is a little quicker. I've now completed the full finding aid, which now consists of two series. The second series has three files. The first series has two subseries, including a subseries that has two files, and the completed volumes, which consists of the five volumes that we saw before. I can also reorder the list by dragging and dropping, using the handle to drag and drop, as you can see here, and then undo it the same way. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And thanks to James Findlay, our instructional designer at the Church History Department for putting, helping me put this together. You may contact me if you have questions or comments, or if you'd like to be kept informed about the progress of this program. Good day.